We're back here at the Robert E. Peterson Gallery of the NRA National Farms Museum here in Fairfax, Virginia. I'm here with Phil Schreier, Senior Curator of the National Farms Museum. Phil, what do you have for us this week on the Curator's Corner? Well, John, to the ordinary uh, casual observer, they might look at this and and say, wow, that's a, an 1842 U.S. Marshall single-shot pistol. I was just going to say that. I knew you would. I, 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 um, but we tricked you. Oh, we got something. not again. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is a, uh, a really neat chapter of American military history. Uh, the first gun that the U.S. military ever uh, adopted was the 1799 North and Cheney single-shot flintlock pistol. It was pretty much a near copy of the Charleville pistol the French had used mm -hmm. during our own uh, American Revolution. Uh, and there has been a collecting force out there of his interested historians who, who've collected U.S. martial guns ever since that first North and Cheney. Uh, this gun is uh, similar to the pattern of 1842. It is an 1842 pattern, U.S. martial single shot. It's percussion. Uh, we evolved from the flint and steel single shot pistols of uh, from the 1799 up to uh, this point, but 1842, we go with a, uh, a percussion uh, style. Uh, but what's neat about this gun is the, uh, the, the markings on this. Mm -hmm. uh, the manufacturer, some of these uh, guns were made at Springfield Armory, some by Asa Waters, some by Ian Johnson. Uh, uh, Harper's Ferry made single shot U.S. Marshall pistols. But this 1842, uh, a thousand of them, only a thousand, were made uh, by William Glazer at Columbia, South Carolina, and uh, with Palmetto Armory written on them. Okay. Uh, and uh, that is what makes this so highly desired and collectible, is that it is a uh, Palmetto uh, gun. You can see, uh, you know, Columbia, South Carolina still has the. Uh, Palmetto tree that's mm -hmm. so famous during the uh, Bonnie Blue Flag in the Civil War era. Uh, these guns were made uh, in 1852, 53. Uh, they're stamped on the gun in a number of places right behind the lock here. Uh, and then you see on this side, very small print, William Glazer, uh, right, right across the back there. Uh, made in the South, uh, Single shot during the uh, during the pre-Civil War period. Obviously, a number of these were used uh, during the war by the Confederacy. Uh, neat ramrod retention system here, uh, which means for guys like me, you won't lose it. You won't lose it. <laughs> ramrod yeah. retention system. And that is for the mounted guys, because these are really the, the horse pistols. Mm -hmm. You see uh, the Courier knives drawings are of uh, of the uh, Civil War. Uh, these are the pistols you see in the pommel holsters. A uh, guy wouldn't wear one on his, on, you know, on a side holster. On his, these were meant to go over the pommel of a horse, mm -hmm. and they're single shot, and they're the original horse pistols. So this is that way, so you don't drop it and lose right. it while you're riding. You're riding yeah. And uh, and you've always you've always got it there. Pretty pretty neat little system, I think. Um, no. With, with being that Palmetto pistol where it's made, how does that, we don't know the exact dollar amount, but an idea, how much does that change the value of that? Oh, tremendously. I mean, you could go to the Baltimore show and you could possibly, uh, you know, find a, a Waters or a Johnson a 42 with any date on it. The people like the pre-Mexican war dates, obviously, but anything up to 19, 1855, and you might get one for seven hundred to a thousand dollars. A Palmetto is going to, you know, ten times that and keep going. Wow. There's only a thousand of them now. The problem is, is that, you know what? We think they're all. I mean, this one's a fake, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. It looks really good, uh, but because there were only a thousand collectors, have gone nuts trying to get them. <laughs> and so some spurious guys have decided to, oh. to kind of fake them oh, up. We've talked about that. We've talked about not this. a good thing to do. But you know what? As we find out, maybe they're all fakes to a degree. Uh, because a good friend of ours, a member of the American Society of Arms Collectors, Lou Southard, a uh, preeminent historian in the field of single shots, has uh, written a number of, of articles that say, you know, Glazer uh, was probably uh, buying overruns 
from the other contractors of this of the same model. Really. And just having them stamped and put together, he was buying. So they're original fakes. And he was getting parts <laughs> from up north. He wow. Had connections to these <laughs> other manufacturers in the north. He knew these guys. Jeez. And maybe these parts were condemned parts mm. that he bought cheap. Uh, overruns, you know, if they were supposed to have 700 guns for the contract, and they made 800 and hoping, you know, mm -hmm. through the inspection process that they'd end up with 700 good ones. Well, the ones that didn't get through inspection, maybe he. So we're thinking that he didn't really have a factory making these guns because, you know, when the Civil War starts, the Confederacy starts looking for guys anywhere that can manufacture right. stuff. Glazer isn't one of them. You know, so if he was making these before the war and had a real factory making them, why wasn't he making them during the Civil War? Uh, so uh, Lou's done some great research on that. Uh, it's, an, it's a great pistol, uh, really interesting. Uh, you know, I've always wanted to, to shoot one of these big old horse pistols mm -hmm. myself, uh, but I, I, I always thought that they were... Uh, yeah, they're pretty stylish, you know, for the time. Absolutely, and, and another great story. I mean, you can't history can't make you can't make a better story than actual history itself. Oh, a lot of a lot of drama in all this. Jeez. A lot of drama. A lot of smart guys who are doing inventive and ingenious things to to get by and to manufacture and, and get it done. So now now where where can we, how can we see this here at the museum? Well, we're really lucky to have this piece. Uh, a great friend of ours, Dr. Fred Novi has been helping the museum uh, acquire a number of Palmetto pieces uh, and identify the fakes that are out there for us. Great. And uh, Dr. Novi is uh, responsible for the donation of this piece to us. And uh, it is on display here in the museum, uh, which is located off the Interstate 66 in Fairfax, Virginia, just outside the Capitol Beltway of Washington, D.C. And the museum is open from 9.30 to 5, seven days a week free parking and free admission. You can find us on the internet at nramuseum.com seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Always there, Phil, thank you. And you're always there for us with, with, with great segments like this and great firearms here, the National Firearms Museum on Curator's Corner. Thank you again, sir, for always coming through for us. John, always a pleasure, thank you.